Hello everyone, my name is Troy and this is DMT Tabletop Gaming. Uh, I have some members here from the OSG and tonight we're going to be taking a look at Star Trek Adventures. Uh, this is my first time running the system. I played it just the one time. Uh, some of these guys have more experience with the game than I and that's great. Um, but this is just going to be a one shot, just a quick little mission uh, to whet our appetite for the 2D20 system. Now. The star date is 2378. The Dominion War has just ended, and the Alpha Quadrant is in shambles. The Bajorans are in control of Deep Space Nine and the Wormhole, but the Federation is still heavily uh, influencing the politics and the restructuring of the area. The members of this crew are new. There are ragtag bunts coming from various other ships and/or just recruits coming out of the academy. They are going to be manning and controlling the small Nova class science vessel. Her name is the Resolution. Her captain is a gentleman by the name of Moutre. He too is young to the captaincy having just been promoted. He however is not on experience when it comes to strife in and around Bajor and Cardassia being a veteran of the four-year war. The camera zooms in on the staging area at Starfleet in San Francisco. Runabouts are coming and going, taxiing people up to Stardock 1 where they are rendezvousing with a galaxy class vessel that are taking many of this crew of this resolution on the long voyage out to the Alpha Quadrant into Deep Space Nine. The camera, camera pans through the stark quarters of this staging area and they look over the shoulder of a broad man, tall, dark haired. Over his shoulder, you see an equally tall female, olive skin, dark brown eyes, long curly black hair. Everything's quiet. Everyone has been boarded already, all except for this man, this newly appointed captain. He has something in his arms and he's rocking back and forth. And you can hear ricocheting, echoing through the chambers, his voice singing you are my sunshine my only sunshine you make me happy when skies are gray and his voice is quivering and shaking as he's rocking back and forth the woman standing opposite him has a tear streaming down his face the camera pans over his shoulder and you see the reason for the emotion the man is holding his newborn daughter she's been gifted with the beauty of her mother, dark black eyes and thick hair. She looks up at her father and smiles and his heart breaks. He gives her a kiss on the forehead and then forehead rather, and then hands her off gently to her mother's waiting arms. He embraces the two of them and quietly walks across the chamber. The door closes behind him as he enters the entrance to the runabout. He stands in the doorway, blocking the light from outside, and a young, overzealous ensign jumps to his feet and gives a salute. Captain on board, he says. No need for that, young man, he says. And he taps him on the shoulder as he enters and walks down the narrow corridor looking at each of the individuals sitting in their seats in turn, giving a slight nod. This is his crew. This is his new family. And if you can introduce your character, describe your character as you sit here in the runabout, as you see your captain, he knows more about you than you know about him. 
He's seen all your dossiers and your reports. He's recruited several of you himself, but he's an enigma to you. None of you have served with him. You've heard about him, but you've never seen the man in action firsthand. Oh, the excitement's been building in Dax Intro ever since he's been assigned to this, what he considers to be a, a wonder, once in a lifetime opportunity. Considering he's a outback, kind of corn-fed boy from some outpost colony that was on the border with the Kardashians. Since that day when he had to flee that planet, and he was brought in through the academy, yeah, he, uh, he's a survivor and a, a rugged human, brought up in a rugged planet, and learned some harsh lessons early, and that helped him excel through the academy with amazing speed and probably help him get this posting now he's been just eager to get onto this galaxy ship he just saluted his captain and he's confident has a gleam in his eye a few scars on his face big shoulders he looks back out the window toward the galaxy and you can see it large massive ship larger than any of you have ever been on before, being that you've known very little time in and about the star systems. Uh, the captain looks at you. He's one, you're one of the individuals that he's taken a uh, interest in. He has a role for you, one that you're not even quite aware of yet. It turns out that the man that was given the position of chief of, chief of security at gotten ill and is no longer able to uh, participate in this first shakedown mission of the resolution you may be getting a early promotion unbeknownst to you at this point he continues down the corridor again looking to his left and right eyeing every man and woman trying to take their measure Do I see any other uh, crew members in the garb of, or that has the badge of the, of the uh, ship? Yeah, the, most of the individuals on this run runabout here currently are um, young junior officers and enlisted men, and also a couple officers, as you see a couple um, two dot insignias on a couple collars. Right. A couple of lieutenants, there's a commander sitting here. Uh, you can only imagine that based on the what you pre perceive as to be a ship full of low-ranking individuals, being that this is a small ship on a small mission, you would imagine that one of the individuals that he is donning the uh, lieutenancy would be probably uh, second in command to this captain. I see. I uh, go about back to my studying up on the my current posting and yeah, intrigued. Anyone else want to introduce the character at this point? Now sure. you also could also be um, being re. Uh, transfer from another ship and you could already be out in the alpha quadrant if you if you choose to be so Yeah, I want to be in the alpha quadrant already so because I have a large family Okay, we did the dissolve and we move out towards deep space nine uh, I, I think I'll, I'll go before we go uh, leave for deep space nine and friends. Hello, hello, hello so uh, before we uh, before we fade to black on that scene, uh, I'll stand up. Uh, Lenaris, uh, uh, you know, is kind of taken back by the emotion that he sees his captain going through, and as a Bajoran who's been away from home, can also uh, feel the tugs of the heart of leaving their family behind. Uh, but uh, that emotion is split between dad and uh, having to, uh, the eagerness to go back home uh, for quite a while. Uh, he's heard of. Uh, Captain Moltre's uh, work and uh, 
in the Dominion War and feels proud to be able to serve under uh, such an accomplished young uh, captain. So uh, uh, Nolaris uh, goes up to him, uh, shakes the captain's hands, and says, uh, it'll be a pleasure serving under you, sir. And, uh, and with the watery eyes, sort of, uh, he, he doesn't want to show any weakness, so he uh, quickly turns away and sits back down. Poor magisters. Your, uh, your expertise in the area exceeds my own. I'm happy to have you as my first commander, Lenaris. You come highly, highly regarded. I think your I will look for you many times in the coming days as we get the crew and the ship ready to take on this first of many missions. Thank you, Captain. It'll be, uh, like I said before, it'll be a, uh, a great honor serving with you. Is the uh, Vulcan on the uh, runabout here as well? Uh, I was kind of thinking, so the runabout's going to Deep Space Nine, correct? The runabout is going to start off one, which is like an orbiting space station outside of Earth, where you guys are rendezvousing with the Galaxy class uh, vessel, which is going to taxi you out to Deep Space Nine. Okay, could I be at the, the gates, almost the doors, when the roundabout lands? Sure. And we'll, we'll go there now. All right. So the runabout, small little vessel. Uh, impulse drive quickly makes the distance from Earth to Earth's orbit to Star Dock 1 or Space Station uh, 1. It's a place where ships are retrofitted, ships are fixed, ships are built even, not near, not too far away. It is a last port of call for many ships before they venture further outside of the known solar system of Earth. The long journey to the Alpha Quadrant. The Star Dock is huge, as big as a city. The runabout docks and everyone disembarks. 18 individuals come off the runabout, the captain being the last, walking slowly behind everyone else. You guys have been briefed. You know where your port is, your exiting station, your place to relocate to wait to board the Galaxy class vessel. They have a mission of their own. You guys are just passengers going on a cruise on this fancy ship. Uh, to the Alpha Quadrant at high warp speeds. It will still take you a week to journey the distance. The captain exits the threshold and makes the long walk towards the waiting area. He sees a lone Vulcan He's wearing the blue garbs of the science and medical team. He recognizes him immediately as the man he's requested to join his crew. Lieutenant, he says. <clears throat> I'm happy you have made it here. We're about to disembark. Uh, Lieutenant Prell approaches <clears throat> Captain. Uh, ca Captain, uh, how many times upon my recommendation have I said not to take a newborn baby into the roundabout as she takes the baby from the captain and starts examining the baby? I know you may be the captain and all, but even then still, I'm the chief medical officer that will be guiding you, and you have to follow my recommendations on any health-related matters as she leaves the captain almost disrespectfully, but not out of character for her nature and she directly takes the bay back to the medical bay just for a quick examining in case something happened along the way 
Right. The captain walks hastily at your foot. But, but, Lieutenant, you misunderstand. My, my little daughter is not coming with us for the long voyage, and she's been on this voyage many times before. I assure you she's safe. But if it will do your logical mind well, uh, by all means, run your scans. My wife will be returning with her to Earth shortly. Sadly, she cannot come with us. No family will be joining us on this trip. It is a small ship. Uh, a big percentage of her hauls are taken up with medical bays and science labs. You'll be happy to hear this, I'm sure. It will be my honor to serve, Captain, but right now my duties are at hand. And if you will let me know when the briefing happens, I'll be sure to be there. But until then, I do have sick patients to attend to. Very good. We will be leaving in the next 10 minutes. I, I hope you'll be ready. We would hate to leave without a medical officer. And he starts to walk back to you, and he, 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 he talks to his wife again for a brief moment and gives her another kiss. And uh, he gives you a nod, relinquish my daughter now. <laughs> and he gives her a kiss as well. And he starts to move towards the exit to get onto the Galaxy Class vessel. So as you guys are boarding the Galaxy Class vessel, uh, Again, you guys are not acting crew on this ship during the journey, so you're free to lounge about the ample uh, recreation and leisure uh, services and entertainment stations that are within this large ship. So it's basically just going to be a cruise for yourselves for the next week. You can get to know each other, get to know the other members of your crew as well as you venture out towards Deep Space Nine. Well, you will be rendezvousing with the ship, which has recently been retrofitted, and also the remaining members of your crew. Some, I'd say, uh, a quarter of the crew are going to be joining you there, and the uh, other 50 individuals or so are on this Galaxy-class vessel heading out towards Deep Space Nine. Waiting at Deep Space Nine is one of your other uh, player characters. So there's like 1,500 people on this ship or something? 80, sorry. There's no, 60. no, I meant the galaxy one we're on. Oh, yes, there's like 700 people. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. This ship does have family members, and uh, they have... They have, uh, like I said, it's like a cruise ship for the Federation, basically. But not the ship that you guys are going to be serving on. It is going to be bare bones science vessel. It's just going to be like a science lab that flies around. It's going to have some uh, fighting That's capacity and stuff, but it, its most main focus is uh, towards uh, science and research. Lieutenant Perel is going to each individual officer one at a time and scanning them and checking their vitals over without even their consent, almost matter of factly. And if people like give her kind of a questioning look like, why are you doing this without my consent? She just continues on her work and moves on to the next person and keeps going on. <laughs> I say you're a uh, nosy fellow, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, that tickles um, a bit. Yeah. So how do I how do I how do I look, Doc? And I kind of open my mouth up and. Um, uh, very much um intact, but um, ooh, I I'll have to run all the the data and the diagnostics once I get back to the laboratory. I'm just collecting the data right now to make sure everyone is healthy enough to go away on these missions because I will not sign off on anyone leaving that is not fully up to capacity um, according to our health protocol. And she continues on to the next person. Al almost like snubbishly, but like very Vulcan-like. I just got a chuckle and wow, I have I think that's the first Vulcan I've ever met. Are they all like that? And I just truly have grew up on a colony and a bit baffled, but eh, seems like a competent fellow, though. I'm glad to see that we're uh, well looked after, don't you? 
And I smack the guy in the back beside me. Is it is it a fellow though? Oh, is it like kind of Adronimus? Or? I'm not sure. I'm asking. I'm asking Jonathan. It Lieutenant Trapnel. Is it a is it a man or a female? The character. A uh, female. Oh, it's a female. Okay. So. <laughs> you'll have to. T- <laughs> okay. <I've- laughs> You'll have to you, excuse me. You're very, yeah. very handsome. Very handsome. Woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those Vulcans. I just shake my head again and chuckle. And I go back looking at, out into space and thinking, boy, this is the first time I've been away from my home, my new home now. I guess I'll have to just learn to get along with these people. I look around and I noticed that there was one other, the Bajoran. Yeah, on this galaxy class vessel, there will be some twenty or thirty uh, different uh, species of humanoids. Some some more uh, familiar forms and shapes. Some very exotic. To you, no, I meant I meant Linares. I know. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, and be, beyond the people that you've met here that you know are part of your crew, this uh, this large ship is like a zoology experiment. But I saw this one Bajoran who was talking to the captain eagerly with a glint in his eye. I've been keeping an eye out for him. And I find my step very light. I'm used to a lot heavier gravity where I grew up. Got to remember that. All right. We're going to dither dissolve the journey has been non-eventful you've been going at warp eight to warp nine for the majority of the trip there's been a few stopovers and uh but just a matter of hours we're not talking days between uh stopping and goings here just hours you guys have made a quick as quick as can be potentially to go from soul all the way to the outer reaches of the alpha quadrant uh you've gotten to know each other a little bit you've gotten to know some of the individuals that are members of this galaxy class vessel they told you about their continuing missions uh that they will be going through the bajoran wormhole and that their quests their missions will see them away from home for years you however not uh, on such a grandiose mission you are to rendezvous at deep space nine the galaxy class vessel slows down to impulse speed some light years away from deep space nine on the slower journey through this region of space you see the schematics and the maps and you see the layout of uh, this area, this neighborhood that you'll be calling home for the foreseeable future. You approach the Bajoran sector and again, you slow down even further to a quarter impulse as you approach this large structure. You haven't seen the wormhole open and close. You haven't seen that spectacle but you see do see this space station it's not like any space stations that you would have seen on earth doesn't have the same aesthetic this is from your studies at the academy you know it to be of cardassian make retrofitted maybe chains definitely but no doubt cardassian in styling it is deep space nine there are one other large uh, Federation vessel and one much, much smaller Federation vessel attached to the arms of Deep Space Nine. You know that the smaller vessel, the Nova class, even though it's of the newest make, of the newest technology, this is the ship you will be calling home. This is the resolution. And it sits proudly there at dock waiting for you and your crew to take over the command. Wow. It's beautiful. Look at her. 
Well, I can't wait. When does it uh, launch? Is it soon? I wonder. Now, what kind of what layover do we have at the station? Are we being assigned quite quickly? Yeah, you guys are. You know that your official mission. I would check. I check my log and stuff. I pull up my little. Yeah. So as as you would have approached on the Galaxy class vessel, the captain would have pulled you get together the fifty of you or so, and he would give you the layout of what is to happen in the next few days. Your official missions does not begin uh, for another week. You have to get your full complement of crew together in the next immediate amount of time. You will have to do your final checks of the ship, final checks of the uh, manifests of the crew and materials aboard to make sure that everything is prepared for when you make your venture out to the Badlands, which is some distance beyond where we are now, going closer to what would have been at one point Cardassian space and the demilitarized zone, all of which is irrelevant now, being that uh, most of that um, politics and uh, worlds have all been destroyed after the Dominion War. So the captain gets you all together in a large conference room before you depart the Galaxy-class vessel. He tells you that you will have free freedom to explore Deep Space Nine for the next three days, but it is his understanding that after those three days, you guys will all board the uh, resolution and begin your final preparations for your upcoming mission. But up until that time, you have free shore leave to do uh, what you like uh, on the space station or any surrounding planets. You guys are all giving your deltas, your command badges, and you are all now able to communicate with each other for uh, immediate and near distances. You're on the clock, gentlemen, but you are given some freedom uh, to explore, being that many of you have never made it to this part of space. So I think before the crew shows up, when the resolution is still attached to Deep Space Nine, but before they get ferried over there, Natala would be on the resolution with her family getting the whole full, full tour. And it's her, her three husbands, a couple of co-wives, and a couple of children. And they would actually get a tour of the small uh, research uh, science vessel. And then she would have her quarters. And um, at one point, they're putting out like, uh, her uh, Denobelian uh, type of homey type of stuff in her quarters. And uh, this little girl, who's her daughter, uh, she looks at her and goes, yeah, it doesn't quite look like home yet. And then she picks up her daughter and her daughter picks up this big thing that looks like a giant dream catcher, but it has all these holo photos of the whole extended family. So there's th like maybe about 36 Polo portraits of everybody in her family that's in like a giant web that's like a family tree, but it's a web. And she, and her daughter hangs that up on the wall and he goes, now it looks like home. Very good. You are the first in command. You're there getting things prepared. Yeah. There are some individuals, people that have... Uh, been transferred from other ships that are now arriving as well and have been doing so for the last week and some. The ship has been here for a while. It has been changed, and you, as a science individual, would know that the reason the ships were changed and updated was because of the faulty um, engines that had been installed in the first generation of this Nova class vessel. Yeah, so I've been watching them re refit it and everything, and and I've been crawling through a lot of the ship trying to, like, have the whole blueprint in my head, like like the back of my hand. Very good. You get a hail from 
someone here on Deep Space Nine, and they inform you that the uh, captain, Captain Moutre, has uh, hailed you on his private channel. Uh, captain. Natal, is that you? Yes. Very well. Uh, me and the crew are about to disembark. We will be there in a matter of hours. Uh, it is my understanding that you have been overseeing the final uh, retrofit of the resolution? Yes, sir. So it's ready for us then? Yes, I'll be waiting for you when you're ready to come aboard. Very good. I would like to have a complete briefing. Uh, if you could meet me in my ready room off of the bridge, uh, that would be appreciated. I will give you notice when I arrive. Thank you. Yes, sir. And uh, the captain hurriedly collects his few uh, materials, his private individual items, and he puts it into a metal case and he walks stoically towards the rendezvous for another shuttlecraft, shuttlecraft rather, which is going to ferry people to Deep Space Nine. I would actually um, get a number of the crew that's already there, and we would meet the captain at the shuttle bay when he shows up, actually. Very good. So the captain arrives. Um, behind him, periodically coming in on different shuttles, is uh, some of the other crew as well. Uh, but the captain is one of the first people that you see. Uh, you know what he looks like. You're real well acquainted of who your CO is going to be. And he, he sees you and he sees some other members of the crew and he gives you all just a, just a nod. And he yeah, says, uh, permission to come aboard, sir. Granted. Shall we then? Yes. Yes. Uh, let me show you the way. And he follows you. I guess he we walks. go to the bridge and then the ready room is, is I, I assume that's the layout. So Yeah, so on small one of the small arms of the uh, D Space Nine here is where the uh, resolution is attached. We go there to the bridge and we go to one of the side rooms, which is where the captain's ready room is. The captain's quarters is also on this uh, this level of the ship as well. And not far away as well are the immediate officers' uh, quarters. It's all close to the bridge, so it's convenient. He drops off his briefcase of his personal items and makes his way to the uh, ready room. It is only a matter of minutes that he arrives that he is hailed once more. You're sitting in the, in the room waiting for him. You were just about to have your debriefing. You were starting to pull up the schematics and the information and the knowledge that you obtained when another beep beep sound comes in and the ship's computer informs the captain that there is another call, a call coming from San Francisco, a call coming from Earth, from the Starfleet Academy, Starfleet headquarters. This call is coming from uh, Captain Anthony Corso. Ah, yes, I'll take it right away, says the captain. Captain Anthony Corso was Moutre's commanding officer during his time fighting the founders in the Dominion War. He's a man that he holds in the highest esteem. He's a man he considers his mentor on every level, a man he respects completely. Uh, yes, this is, this is me. This is Mutri, he says. And the captain, Corso, on the other end, there's a cracking in the voice. There's emotion there. He's not on a visible prompter. You don't see him. There's just an audible message. He says, Mutri, my boy, I have something to ask of you. I understand that you've just arrived. Hopefully I've gotten you before you've sent out on a mission. I have something I need you to do for me before you officially 
start your service. Mutri looks around. He looks to you, his CEO. He's like, Corso, is it okay for you to have this conversation with me in the company of others? Well, it depends on who those others are, he says. He says, well, my XO is here. Please introduce yourself. Hello. Hello, Captain. My name is uh, Lenaris Los. Lenaris, says Corsa. Lenaris, I must speak to the captain alone. And the captain says, no, no, she's my XO. If you can say something to me, Corsa, you can say it to her. Yeah. I, I was always given that right under your leadership. And I will offer the same to my exo. Very well, says Corsa. He says, my daughter, it is a matter of family. My daughter has been, she's missing. I have reached out to the Federation. I've told them what I know that her science vessel had gone missing, not far from where you are now, but they are in deliberations on what to do. Time is running out. Time is running out, Mutri. I need you, you are there, you are my man. Please help me in this. I don't have much information, I just have a name. A person you can contact there on the space station that knows more, please get this information. And if it's possible, I need you to see if you can do anything to aid my daughter. He looks to the lieutenant. It's not official business, but we are, we are not we are not officially a crew yet, sir. This would be against all protocol. I don't give a damn about protocol, boy. This is my daughter, he says. Well, Captain, we could uh, you know, take the resolution out for a, a dry run to see what's going on, okay. see how she handles in, uh, I think I was shooting at in space and warp and impulse engines. Right there, uh, engineer. There's no engineer here yet, well, but I thought, I thought he was here. the captain looks to you and he says, yes, you're right. We do need to take the ship out for a dry run to test out our engines, to test out her capacity. We might be able to help you with this, captain. Give me the name. I will send my XO here. If anyone can get the information, it will be her. He says, there's a Ferengi. You can find him in Quark's bar. His name is Moloch. Or at least that's one of my contacts there on the space station says. There was word that he had said something, or he had said that he had heard something. That's all I know, Moxley Mutre. I need you and your team to help me, please. My daughter's life may depend on it. I must go now. I must go and see what the Federation is doing with these deliberations. I do not understand why they, why they would be so slow to act. But I'll get to the bottom of it. If I find out any more information, I'll make sure to let you know. Corso out, and the comms go dead. The captain looks to you, lieutenant, and says, uh, I need to oversee these changes to make sure the crew is ready if we do have an opportunity to act. This is a lot to ask of you, Nutella. Could you do this for me? Can you go meet this Ferengi? Can you go see if you can get to the bottom of this information that he has? Of course, Captain. Uh, I don't personally know this Moloch. I used to, I've heard of the previous owner, Quark, before, uh, the Federation came in and took over. It's in my it is uh, disturbing to be back on this station when 
the last time I remember it, it was in Cardassian's hands. But I'll do what you ask of me and uh, proudly serve you and try to uh, help you in this endeavor for your for your previous captain. Take anyone you need. Yes, uh, I would probably like to take uh, uh, the, the the new guy, the, the new human. Uh, uh, he seems pretty uh, eager to get things done. Uh, the Vulcan can stay behind because she it's seems a little like the uh, not very friendly and would probably uh, not be very uh, helpful in a bar situation. But maybe, uh, yeah, she is a medical person, so maybe I could take her too just to help her get a little bit more uh, accustomed to uh, less, uh, uh, less, more social uh, engagements. Yeah. We don't want her uh, upsetting uh, the crew with her uh, bedside manner. Very well. I trust your judgment in this. I will make sure that the ship is ready. I will uh, make sure everyone is accounted for and ready to act if we need to do so. Please keep in touch with me, and I'll do the same. Of course, Captain. All right, so we did the dissolve. You have with you your boarding party. You guys have already assembled and you're making your way through the space station towards the area where there's stores. I was going to ask, were you going to bring the uh, science officer? Because she's a local. So Yeah, bring everyone, I think. Keep everyone together if you want. If anyone yeah. doesn't want, if anyone doesn't want to go, that's fine. They can narrate what they will be doing in the interim. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot about you, Morgan. Sorry. So, I so guess you, you come, you come are along. You us, are you gonna tell us what this mission is? Me? Uh, no, no. no, I'm not gonna tell you. Just you. say come along. Get to know, buddy. Yeah, just say back me up. Oh, that doesn't help if you don't tell us what we're doing. All right, I'll say uh, for a friend. I'm looking for. Uh, a uh, personal friend of mine's uh, daughter who's uh, turned up missing. How's that? It, we're all party to this now? Yeah, you guys can all be present. You make your way to court. Oh, I just hold out. I just give him a sly look and I say, this doesn't sound like uh, official Starfleet business. Kind of give him a wink. Is this uh, official? You just need to know that I'm telling you what to I do at the moment minutes. here, uh, corporal or private, whatever you are. So since I'm more local, what do I know about um, Moloch? Well, let's roll. Uh, so you can roll. What will we roll for that, for you to know that kind of information? What do you, what do you, uh, Is what it, do you propose? It might be insight and... What's, what's your specialty? You were a science officer? Yeah. Is the Vulcan with us? Yeah, the Vulcan's with us, too. I would say I would say insight and security. Insight and security? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's with us. So that's a 13. Yeah, so the difficulty is going to be, I'm going to say, he's well known, so I'm going to say the difficulty is only going to be just one. Yeah, I got a one success, so that's perfect. All right, so you know that Moloch is a tradesman most like most Ferengi, uh, you know that he does do a lot of business uh, of ships coming and going through the wormhole. And you do know that he does most of his business out of the, uh, as you say, the bar previously owned by Quarks, still titled Quarks. But he's not the owner. He just works out of it. He, he just drinks and gambles and uh you know, host people and stuff there as if he was just a patron of the bar. You know? I would share the information I know with the first. Now, you don't really know the nature of what type of trades that Moloch participates in, uh, but you, knew, you do know that people um, stay clear of him if they're on mm -hmm. his bad side. He does have some clout and some, some power, uh, and a lot of it does seem to be in like underworld mm -hmm. um, dealings yeah I, I would bring up all that just to so what you're telling me Natala, is that okay. he, he doesn't really own the bar 
or is officially associated no, with the bar? He, he's sort he's of like a, a, a bar a fly. Dealer, dealer, no, more like a mobster that hangs out in the bar. Okay. Now, I realize I'm just a corporal or whatever, but I am a security officer here. And so we're going to a bar to talk to a guy about it. somebody's kidnapped daughter. Sounds like uh, it. No, not a kidnapping. It's a uh, missing or lost. We'll get ahead of yourselves there. Hey, and, uh, and again, I'm, hey, Corporal, what's your last name? I forgot. It's actually Lieutenant Sinto. Oh. Oh, Lieutenant Sinto, sorry. Thank you. And yeah, I'm curious as to is, is this formal Starfleet business? You're involving Starfleet officers in an investigation at a bar? Uh, I guess you don't have to come along unless you want to. How about that? I'm not ordering you to go. I, I'm asking you. Ah, well, that's better. That's, <laughs> that's all I was looking for, some uh, straight answers. All right, then. Lead on. And you are the, again... Okay, I am Lamaris Lopes. I'm the, the first officer. No, no, no. Let's He's your ah, boss. Sir, pleased to meet you. Lead like on. you said, like you said, this is an informal, uh, uh, infor uh, an informal chest, uh, job or inquiry. How's that? Ah, I appreciate the clarification. I'm on your side, then, sir. Lead on. And I, you know, it's good to uh, get yeah, to know the local folk sometimes. here. Get you a little bit more exposure. There, I must admit, I was eager to get to the ship. I was going to forego all this space station stuff. It smells to me of Kardashian. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, sadly, I think I do know what you mean. Help me look. As I said, sire, at your service. Uh, Lead on. So, uh, like I said, I, it, if I had been here, it was really brief, and I got out of here. So I'll uh, expect uh, Lieutenant Latala to take us uh, to Corpse. Yes, I will take you to Corpse. Just killed this person. And, so, and yeah, there, I would yeah. sort of, instead of pointing out Moloch, I would just sort of nod my head in his direction, right? Uh -huh. okay, so yeah, so as, you, as you approach uh, Quartz, you could hear the uh, rambunctious sounds of merriment inside. There's music playing and also the sounds of the games, the machines uh, making a thousand different sounds. Lights are neon and blinking. Everything is meant to... Um, keep people awake and alert and to spend money <laughs> and i turn to the commander i go oh yeah all the machines are rigged nobody really wins money here i wouldn't gamble if i were you uh, thank you for that information uh, but those double tables do look very enticing even with your uh no, come with, come with, with the information you have uh, given There's someone me. in this house so uh, I will go in and uh, buy everybody a drink. Uh, I'll hit the bar. Uh, I'll get the bartender's uh, attention. And I said, uh, we're just fresh off a boat here in the ship. I'm, so, I'm sorry. And uh, I'd like to buy my new, uh, my, my new subordinates uh, a drink or two. What would you have, says a little Ferengi. Uh, give me something uh, not too heavy, a little bit light. Uh, some brandy. I'll let you pick which kind. Romulan, oh. Romulan L. Will you be at the bar? Will you be standing? Will you be taking a seat, sir? We have yes, only I'll a few be. tables remaining. Well, if there's a table, I'll sit down. Very yeah, well. I'll, have one for the, for the I'll get your drinks. I'll get the best we have, and I'll bring them right to you. Please okay. make yourself at home. Everyone's welcome here at Corpse. Commander, if you have latinum, if you have latinum, you'll be even more welcome. <laughs> Well, we have all we have is uh, uh, well, Federation you know, credits. Federation yeah, credits are credits. easily transferred to Latinum. Oh, Your money is good here, sir. Please have a seat. Thank you. So I let the I let the rest of the crew uh, pick out what they want to drink. I try to pay attention a little bit to uh, Mr. Moloch. All right. So you scan across the room. You uh, see the gentleman in question. Um, he is a stout little. Uh, Ferengi man. He seems to be boisterous. He seems to be loud. He seems to be demanding attention. 
of the individuals that's sitting around his round table in a dark, secluded corner. Uh, on each shoulder, there's a beautiful uh, woman. Uh, she appears to be humanoid, or they appear to be humanoid, but they're scantily clad, uh, midriff, shoulders, legs, up to the upper thigh, all exposed. Uh, you would think they were human, if not for the gills on the side of their faces. Uh, also standing, flanking these beautiful women uh, off to the side of Moloch, you see, which is not uncommon for Ferengi, uh, these Iperian, um, what you would assume to be bodyguards, as these hulking, look to be male individuals, are just standing with their arms crossed in a menacing fashion. As I said, Moloch is uh, talking loudly, and every time he what appears to make a joke. He keeps uh, slapping one of the uh, females on the upper thigh or lower buttocks as he jokes and grabs and clutches and brings them closer. They are playing some form of game of chance at the table, uh, and Moloch seems to be doing quite well as he has several... Uh, lines of bars of gold pressed latinum in front of him a larger pile than any of the individuals mostly also Ferengi uh, have in front of them he does not seem to be phased or interested in the fact that several uh, federation garbed individuals have come in and taken up a seat it is not a uncommon sight during this time on deep space time The young man, the young waiter, comes back with several bubbly, colorful drinks and places them down on the circular table, which you all are sitting at. And he says, uh, I will add this to your bill. May I take your name, sir? Yeah. Yes, my name is uh, yeah. Lenaris Los uh, from the Resolution. Lenaris Los. Resolution, you say? ship's been here a while. I was wondering what the Federation had planned for this ship. Good to meet you, Mr. Los. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is not important, sir. Uh, I am just a lowly server. Uh, even the lowly server deserves a name. They do the brunt of the work as far as my, uh, from, from the best that I know of. Bardic is my name, sir. But again, I'm of little importance. It's a pleasure to meet you, Fardak. You as well. So uh, after he leaves, I'll ask. I, uh, I ask the table. Uh, do you guys? Any of you guys know the the game that that uh, Moloch is? Uh, and I point to the That's table me. with my head. Uh, the, the game that no. they're playing. I have uh, not seen or even understand the game. No. And you, just, you just see some large bulbous, like semicircles, uh, flashing uh, in front of the individuals playing the team game, and periodically one of them slams one of the flashing colors and and yells out some uh, indistinguishable word that you can't understand from this vantage. <laughs> Sounds fun. Looks fun. They seem to be having a good time. More like more than the others. Uh, you've been here a while, uh, uh, Latala. Do you uh, know that game at all? No, not at all. But uh, maybe I can use my tricorder and see yeah. if there's anything unusual about the equipment they're using. Even that. What about you, uh, Vul Vulcan? Uh, what is your name again, Vulcan? I, I forgot your name. Oh, <clears throat> my, I forgot my name too. Uh, oh, Taprell. Yes. I'm not too familiar with um, games of chance, uh, Commander. Um, it's my best knowledge that games of chance is not worth the risk. You look at the probability versus the risk reward. Uh, one would be wise not to do it. Yes, I understand that, but uh, your unique uh, ability to uh, to look at things logically might uh, give us some sort of a, a idea of how the game is played. But uh, but uh, if you don't uh, want to engage your mind in that kind of activity, then I understand. 
Well, if it is required of me for my station, Commander, then I'll be more than happy to oblige. However, if it is one where I'm using my own um, earnings and credibility to indulge in such game, then it is not in my financial best interest. No, no. I'm not, I'm not asking you to gamble. I'm just asking I'm you to bombing, try to figure out place. the game as best as you can. No, let the Vulcan gamble. Psst, come here. Well, well maybe, uh, Commander, if you know of some other game that he may want to gamble on that you are very good at, maybe you should challenge him to that. If Averse is playing his game, you should probably have him play your game. Oh, these Vulcans oh, are brilliant. I'm not a Vulcan. <laughs> Yeah. He's the Nublian. The Nublian. Oh. Uh, you can tell yes. by the ears. I'm not a Vulcan. <laughs> yes, uh, that's true. Maybe we can uh, uh, entice him to try a different game. But most likely, you know, people who amass a lot of money like that in, in a certain game are not quickly or easily to leave it behind for a, a different leaders. game where they may not have too much expertise. But we could try. But it's pretty clear he's an expert at that game. I don't know if you want to play his game, you would just lose. Yeah, you got to spend something to get something here, Natala. So, uh, you want to? Yeah, so I'll I'll get up and I'll I'll just you know with drink in hand I'll go and and uh, yeah. stay behind, to not get too close to the table, just to check things out, just to see how the game is played. You know, uh, uh, smile or laugh when somebody makes a big. Uh, a big move where you know, they get all excited uh, and see if there's any reaction from Moloch or his goons. Yeah, the game is continuing to be played out much like it was as you were watching it earlier. Moloch seems to be winning uh, more than he's losing. And when he loses, you can tell that he has a disdainful look as he glares at his opponents. They all seem to be lesser Ferengi. They all seem to be looking up to him as if they're subord subordinates to him. But he sees you in the corner of his eye. Now, I'm going to establish a trait here uh, for any type of negotiation or social uh, interactions with Moloch here in this den of depravity that he calls his home. And I'm going to entitle the trait um, Home Field Advantage. So any type of negotiation or intimidations or anything that you do with Moloch, uh, he's going to have, you're going to have to do, deal with a harder difficulty. Okay. Uh, so yeah, being, being that he's in this dark little corner, minus the lights and flashes of these gaming machines upon the table in which he sits, he does spot you as you approach. Uh, oh, but join, is it? Please come have a seat. Uh, my home is my home. So place your thumbprint on the legal waiver and deposit your mission at the door, he says to you. And he offers his hand out in gesture for you to sit beside him. Oh. <laughs> he starts to laugh. <laughs> I'm only getting the oh, joint. Man. It's an old Ferengi greeting and a personal favorite of mine. Please, please, come have a seat. Do you come uh, for games or do you come for business? Well, yes. Uh, uh, no one enters a... A, a fine establishment such as this for for business. We are, uh, me and my friends have just arrived, and I was very uh, in, intrigued by this game that you're playing. It's I've never seen it. Uh, I have never heard of it, but it it looks like a lot of fun. But I, I can't quite get the get the gist of the of the rules or the, how the game is played. Oh, so I, a, I, I take this. It's just a game of chance, like in many other games of chance that we brought with us here to the bar from Ferengi. Oh, it's a Ferengi game. Uh, yes, of course. He would do very, very poorly in this game, Majorin. As would your allies, your fellow uh, federation folk over there. Yes. Well, I guess I could play around just to... It looks like fun, either when I win or lose. Oh, please, please, have a seat. Oh, I'll gladly take your your credit or gold plate of light and whatever you carry with you. Yes. Uh, he points to one of the... Snaps his fingers to one of the females. Female, female, come here. Maybe our Bajoran friend here would like to have a little pick me up to increase his <laughs> potentials of <laughs> winnings. 
Uh, and she, no. she comes over with this little silver uh, snuff <laughs> box, basically. <laughs> it's the finest beetle snuff for you, Bajoran. Oh, I'm quite a right, and I believe it's against regulations. And uh, I am on the clock yeah, no matter what. My the, first pump had him for 30 uh, no matter so where I am. Minutes. So I, I, you know, I just wave away the girl, and I, and I say, well, thank you very much, but uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to play without the enhancements. Very, very well. This is your loss. It's the finest stuff. Finest stuff. We got it from the <laughs> Gamma Quadrant. All right. So this is the way the game works, Bajaran. And he tells you the overly uh, complicated and convoluted rules of said game. Even after he says it, even with your high intellect, it's still several degrees above your head of understanding. Yeah, I just you know I just toss a few credits on there, like you know, like I usually do when I go play like uh, you know blackjack or something. I just I'm throwing money away anyway, so uh, I won't care about where I if I place it right or I just make some dumb moves and and just just to I mean, get the it. guy talking to me. Very well, and that's how it plays out as well. Um, he wins all your money in short order. He wins the majority of it. You can see that he's going above and beyond to make sure that he is the one that wins all the games that you actually uh, ante up into. <laughs> uh, better luck next time to join. It seems like all your money is uh, spent. Yes, yes. Well, I couldn't happen to, I uh, couldn't lo lose it to no, a, a more right uh, auspicious and clever man such as yourself. Have you ever played any chess? Oh, I can't say that I have. Seems like a game that's for created by those humans <laughs> don't play those human games but Joan. not at all no you should stay clear of those humans they're not to be trusted those, well you're working for the federation i should uh -huh. hold my tongue no no i understand what you're saying yeah, they, I know. I they have a they have a sordid history in their past also uh but they're not all bad may i have your name my name is uh lenaris los yeah. Oh, Lenaris, my name is. I guess I could call and tell you my name. You just, just saw my money. My name is Morlock. Oh, I run yeah. things here. Oh. I am connected. I Does that mean you own the bar? No, no, no. I don't need to own the bar. I just, away from us and I, hate him, so. I just do business out of the bar from time to time when it suits my interests and my profits. <laughs> Oh, oh, so this is like your office. Yes, exactly. Oh. The join. Oh, what kind of business do you do? Do you do I like uh, like trading, I suppose? Yeah, you got it. Importing, exporting through yeah. the through the wormhole. It's quite lucrative. Quite good for profits. Oh, yes. Profit, yes. Yeah, take a burst. Well, it was good to meet you, and I'll do the, the human custom and, and uh, shake his hand. Let's see oh if he, he goes for that. He does not. He does not? Okay. No. He says, may I come back and yeah. put your money on the table any time, Bajoran, and you can bring your friends with you next time. I'll make room for them. All Easy right. winnings. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll leave the table, and I uh, and I go back to the rest of the guys, and I'm like, and I tell them what happened. You know, they can see what happened. I lost I lost all my money. No. Uh, did uh, did I get a sense of uh, how uh, how dangerous those guys were? No. His, his, uh, his bodyguard. Did, they didn't have any weapons upon them, which no one does uh, unless you're security working uh, on the station. Uh, they just seemed to be big, wholefish goons. They didn't even what? change their disposition when you were there. They didn't seem to be alarmed or. What did he know uh, about the girl? I never got that far. I was just trying to figure out uh, who this guy was and try to gain a little bit of familiarity with him before I, uh, How many I uh, ask him any kind of questions. I don't want to. I don't want to go straight in and start asking him questions. One, he might be a little bit suspicious, and two, if anybody did that to me, I would definitely not uh, not be forthcoming with any information. At least this way, he knows us. He recognizes me, and then maybe later we can uh, I can ask him for more. Uh, no sensitive information. Oh, I see. Yeah, they're not. What do you like, think? Don't they just want profit? Well, yeah. I guess you you want to give them a big lump of money. Is there any way you can beat him at a game? Oh, this is the entire team. Yeah, he's pretty. 
Thank probably you. doesn't want to play any game he doesn't really like or doesn't Build a really tower. know. You forget we have a Vulcan. That's true. If we can convince the Vulcan to game, she can get the information. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. What do you think, uh, Tapral? Did have you uh, figured out anything about that game? Tapral, see, there's a young girl's life at stake here. Maybe we can uh, fund you uh, for a for a couple yeah. of rounds. How much money you spent? You lost all your money. I got some. Tell you what, Tapral, you figure out this game. You're brilliant, right? I took a I took a group well, of minis. Maybe just to go back just a little bit. When that game was going on, is that game was it played amongst a bunch of different people? The majority of the individuals present were Ferengi, uh, yeah. but there there were a couple other uh, individuals as well. So is it kind of like <laughs> poker, more or less, like in terms of like there's multiple people playing and then there's like bluffing and not bluffing exactly yeah okay because so i was going to ask when that whole incident was going on could i have kind of had like made a medical check and being like oh that's weird or had like a physiological response which suggests surprise and then they lose or something so then but like i was just kind of like noting it wasn't really like interacting with it uh very, you could do that it's going to be difficult yeah, i don't know how much interaction you've had with Ferengi. you could tell me if you've had lots of interaction with Ferengi or not I would say probably little to minimal, like definitely have interaction, but not a lot. They do tend to stick to their own. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll make it a, a three difficulty. Okay. So you're going to use um, reason, reason or insight. Okay. Yeah, you could, you could, you have some, you have any experience with uh, LD? How do you no, uh, survive and I think that these Frangies are cheating there. <clears throat> I tell I tell the Vulcan, I say, I don't know about your planet, but where I come from, when we played poker, I remember watching they used to give signals. There's more look at all the Frangie at the table. Yeah, you would have you would have noticed with your keen eye uh that periodically uh that same beautiful half-dressed female with gills uh, that offered the snuff to your Bajoran friend and offered the same snuff box to many other people. And with a security check and uh, reason, difficulty two, you might be able to spot her giving the Ferengi hand signs. So you go ahead and roll yours first, and if you succeed, you'll be able to give him a, a success. <clears throat> Could I could I have helped with my tricorder and stuff? Because I was saying I was trying to record what was going on. Yeah, let's just. There's only one aid at a time, so we'll do this one, and then we'll we'll see what else. That this, I got yours I might be more. Yours Go might ahead. be yours might be more uh, compatible with what the medical officer is doing with okay. your tricorder. So I might give you an assist with that, and we'll have uh, we'll have. We'll have Dax be its own individual thing, okay? So difficulty two, Dax, you're gonna have roll two d twenty, and if you want to add any d twenty, you can spend some of your momentum that you have, or you can give me threat. So it works. If you want an additional d twenty, it will cost you one. If you want two additional d twenties, it'll cost you three. Okay, I'll. This is important because I want to give us every edge, so I'll spend one. All right. So I'll get two rolls then, or three? No, you're going to roll three d twenty. Okay. So the 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 things were reason and security. So add those up, and you got to roll underneath those scores. Roger. Okay, my reason is eight. My security's four. So I have to roll three times under twelve. Yeah. Well, okay. each one is a success. 19, 3, and a 2. Okay. Oh, the three wow. is a double success, and the 2 is a double success, so that's a 4 success. Yeah, right. Depends okay. if he has a focus that's compatible. Oh, yeah. Uh, what are your focus? Uh, oh, my. Oh, no stranger to violence. Uh, trust is only for those I know. Loyalty is for friends. That's good. So that's good. That, I'll do the trust one. That's work, the, yeah. the trust yeah. one's good. So you don't trust anyone. You don't trust this attractive <laughs> woman that's you know, walking around the table. Every time Moloch won, wins, it just seems to be a coincidence that that woman had offered up some snuff to one of these other Ferengis. So, Nutella, I say, watch watch the girl. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's, 
for the purposes of the momentum that you spent, you only spent one, right? But you just earned some back. So you got a three and a two. Those are both two successes. So that's four successes. And what did I say the difficulty was? Three? Uh, two. 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 So you earned two momentum. Are you keeping track of that or do I? I am, yeah. So you guys are sitting on five momentum now. You spent one, but you a net positive it, one. It because, yeah, it did. Uh, so I just, okay, observe. Okay, this is this is our chance. I think we can get this guy at his own game. Or maybe we can blackmail him, I wonder. Mm. Yeah, and the prize could be the information because yeah, to him, yeah. information is money. Some of these other Ferengi also have goonish individuals uh, flanking them as well. So you, you obviously see that the, the game is in and that Moloch is using these women to... Uh, tip the hands of his opponents for sure what a bastard do you think he can do it look at tala well maybe we can record some of this and then we use to blackmail him after the game and make him give us the information we want blackmail i don't blackmail but <laughs> so let's let's rewind it back while you were doing your assessment of the scene uh the science officer and the medical officer were also scanning the biorhythms of the individuals to try and get a upper hand on how to actually win the game if you were to play it. Mm -hmm. So right. who was going to do the assist and who was going to do the straight test? I was going to do the assist. All right, so you're using your tricorder. That's going to be command and it's going to be what, science? Uh, yeah, so it's reason, I guess, right? Is that science? Yeah, reason and science. Okay. So you, this is, so if he gets a success here, uh, John, uh, trap, trap roll, trap roll, lieutenant will uh, get a success on your roll as you do your assessment of their... So is this sensor operations or is that only for the ship or is the tricorder a sensor operation? Oh, you're not on your ship, okay. though. You're You're on the... You're not tapped into deep space. Well, I'm just saying, as my focus, I have a sensor operation. So is the tricorder a sensor operation? Um, I don't believe that's the case, but okay. I don't know if it's a com. I don't know if it's a com like sim like a sensor scan from the ship, or if it's a pers interpersonal one. Let's say it is for the purpose of this. Why not? I was just curious, but I did get two successes. Okay, so two successes to you. Uh, Mr. Vulcan, as you start to try to understand the the game itself, and his uh, his uh, difficulty was three, right? He needed three. Yeah, it's going to be three difficulty. So he's already given you two. So what do you propose you're going to use to try to understand the the uh, body language of these individuals? Was that well, with my assist? Not you. You did your own individual thing. These guys are doing their own individual thing. Ah, gotcha. Well, what I was kind of like imagining was when the commander was playing the game, I was kind of just like hands behind my back, just kind of watching what was going on. And then like kind of like seeing when people like had like bad hands or whatever the equivalent of the hand would be in this. And then right. like seeing like could I be like that nervous reaction? Just being like, oh, that only happens when people feel nervous or like, oh, that like beat of sweat, like very particular things that like a doctor would see. Okay. So, so I'll like, just basically just reading block tells. So what attribute and what discipline? Let's try to figure that out. What would be the I, best? I was thinking reason and medicine because I'm looking for physiological changes in the body language. I like it. So yeah, what, what, are, what are those numbers and roll under them? You're gonna start with two D twenty. Okay, and I'll spend you, you, one of the um momentum. momentum to get an extra one. Okay. So three D twenty and I'm rolling under a sixteen. So you're also trying to, are you focusing on Moloch himself or the others as well? Because you're focusing on, Mo well. okay, so I'm yeah. not going to give you the enhanced difficulty because you're, if you were only focusing on him, the difficulty would have been boosted because it's home field advantage. But because you're watching all of them, I'll leave it as the three. Now, can I assist him on this? I'm kind of with no. him, coaching him? No. There's, there's already one assist and that's all there can be, which already gave him two, two advantage or two successes. I rolled two sevens and a one, and I think the one counts as two successes, correct? That's correct, and the sevens are both successes as well. So you just 
again, so the difficulty was three. You're sitting on two, three, four successes. So you just gain yet another momentum that you spent. Uh, so yeah, you can you can narrate what your mind in conjunction with the information the tricorder is giving you about the uh, the biorhythms and the body language and the readouts that you're getting as you guys scan these people playing the game. Well, um, Commander, I, I don't know if this is pertinent to how the game is played or not, but I did notice that the Ferengi to the left of Moloch always seem to raise their left fur when they seem to have a more losing hand. And the Ferengi to the right, his bottom left lip pursed just ever so slightly whenever he was on the losing hand. Now, having said that, both of them equally almost raised their eyebrow a quarter inch in the uh, <laughs> dorsal direction of the head. I do not know if that plays at all into the game, but it did seem to change the wagers as per stated. All right, so with that information, I'm going to give you guys a trait. If you do opt to play the game in the future, it's going to be called Know Thy Enemy. So you guys are going to know all the tales of the people around the table. Okay, it's going to give you an advantage. I'm impressed. If you're to play the game. So what you get, gathered there was um, your security, chief of security, had spotted the uh, Moloch was cheating. So you have that information that he was using his, uh, his little baristas to uh, cheat. And you and the uh, science officer figured out uh, all the little tells and mannerisms and facial twitches that the, the two Ferengi or the majority of the other opponents uh, what were giving away when you were playing the game if you were to opt to play it in the future. They're they're back to playing the game as they were when you when you first came. So uh I come back to the table and they I guess they tell me this. Yeah. So the question yeah. is whether you want to play the game or whether you want to blackmail them. <laughs> yeah that is the question. Uh, I think uh uh <coughs> Probably blackmail would work quicker, but we'd have to wait until like the end of his uh, gambling run or his meeting or his business hours, or we could try to uh, uh, try to play against them and try to win money and then you know pay him back with his own money to uh, to get the information. Yeah. yeah. So we can try that, and then is there a way we can yeah, block? If it fails, we can do the blackmail. Yeah. That's so true. can we that's block true. the girls? So. It Watching no, the but game. we we know the girls now, so no, we no, get... but we need to block them so they're she, they don't help him, right? Well, if we play into that, we can use that to our advantage. Oh, give him a false signal somehow. Exactly. Oh, right? can is there any way we can make do make the girls a false signal? All right, should say, uh, comrade. Do you know what I? Do you understand what I mean about this false messages to the girls? You could use the advantage of knowing their tells, plus giving false messages to the girls to get the advantage. But who can pull this off? Who amongst us is the best poker player? You play chess, I hear. Hmm. I have dabbled in chess once or twice. Uh, yes, that's one of my focuses is 3D chess, but, but he doesn't want to play chess. No, but I mean, you know, games though. Your analytical oh, mind. Yeah, like, can yeah. you can you can you can you use these elements I've I've talked about, like the girls knowing, giving them false t false information while playing the tells. Yeah, I think it would definitely help. Yeah, that that's a double advantage right there. And then hopefully, <laughs> it's we're walking a fine line though. There's lots of goons there, yeah. and I'd say before oh. we try to blackmail them. We better uh, try a bit more of the subtle approach. Yes, that's true. I think we can uh, we can try one and fail, and then try the last one, and, uh, and okay, and then let's see if it works. So, who wants to try this? Is it going to be the Vulcan who's got the the brains, or is it going to be the the poker player? He's the one that knows all the the tells firsthand as well. It's easy to tell someone but yeah but i'm afraid her blunt honesty is gonna sink her you realize you're gonna have to you realize i look at her and with a keen eye kind of say you realize you're gonna be playing a game of bluff here and those girls are gonna be looking for 
you to, and you're going to have to give them false information. Can you do that? Well, if it's under the commander's um, best interest, then most certainly I can. Um, That's what I wanted to hear. Excellent. So I override her quickly. <laughs> then it's settled. We have ourselves our, uh, we have ourselves our game player. master. The player, yes. A commander, if I may be so bold to ask, but would it not be equally wise and opportune to call out Moloch on his um, cheating behavior and then beat him in a fair game? Oh, always with your Vulcans and fair game. Uh, I believe uh, I believe uh, uh, Lieutenant Sinto is uh, is correct in this. Let's try to beat him at their own game, and then uh, and then uh, we can uh, fall back to different uh, different. Uh, what is it? Uh, different ways of attacking this situation. Yeah, plan B. You could do this. I know you can. Nakado, I, I know you can. I clasp her on the shoulder. To Prel, uh, yeah, well, we have confidence in you. You got this. As you all give him his money. <laughs> give her your money. Yeah, here's my credit card. You got this. But when you have him, remember the girl. That's the information. He'll sell that rather than part with him precious latinum. Yeah, hand over about the girl. Hand over your credit card, Natal. So your 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 credits for the uh, Starfleet Federation credits. So this is funny because this was just a descriptive flair just to describe the scene, the environment. <laughs> I plan I plan no game of chance rules. So uh, this is all just you know don't throw something to the players because you never know where they're gonna run with it. <laughs> yeah, this is where we find ourselves. So, if you guys are going to present yourself to play the game, we're just going to do an opposed role to expedite it. Uh, I think in the difficulty, the difficulty is going to be three to beat Moloch at this game with the increased difficulty of one for his home field advantage, which is going to be canceled out from the advantage that you guys had created earlier. So we're we're back to a net of three to beat him beat him at the game. I have faith in you to prowl. Now can he buy momentum and such? So oh far? yes. It, it, so can Moloch though. He also yeah, has a so loaded up. Loaded loaded up. Has a... What's the maximum? So he can get an assist from a person. Can we yes. assist him while he's playing? Yeah, someone can stand over his shoulder and like give him a tip, just like Moloch is getting from. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll do that because like I, I, I uh, one of my focuses is 3D chess. So even though it's not the, quite the same game, it's still a game of, uh, of what is it of, uh, of not a chance. What well, is a game of chance, but of uh, what odds and and stuff like that. So are you going to try to give him a tell like the girls are doing for Moloch? If so, that's going to sure. be like a sneaky thing. That's going to be daring and security. Uh, or something else. If you want to put something in there besides security, I think uh, security daring. is definitely yeah. daring, though. Not Don't daring forget the command. girl. <laughs> daring awesome. command. Yeah, yeah you, you could probably do that. You could do it like a secret sign that only Starfleet personnel yeah. would know. Maybe yeah, you could do that. Code or something. On my, on my, on my. Sure. On my so he's got watchful eyes as well. So it's going to be also. This is going to be a difficulty two though for that for right. this assist. Okay. Right. So you go ahead and roll that initially. All right. You also so can much, spend momentum if you want. I think how much you can't. Uh, you can't on a system. I think. On a system, yeah. Can oh. I? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna roll. Okay. Can I, can I? Can I throw down my determination? If you want to get a, six, a guaranteed two successes, yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll, I'll spend in my my one determination and get. Do you have Do you have a um, a value as well that could get you that determination back uh no nah, i don't think so i have eager and ambitious i have uh thrill of discovery liberation at all species and a starship is a home and the crew is my family so yeah i don't think any of those are no, no, no. so you no, go I ahead roll. so that's so that's a guaranteed extra dice which will give you right. two successes and you can roll the other two so i got a five and a 12 which is uh, under 15 which i need okay so you you gave um your player uh one success good and who is your player uh the player is the pro i believe okay so the difficulty is going to be 
So this is an opposed check, right? So you're going to, whoever's got the, the most uh, momentum is going to be the winner between you and Moloch. Uh, I'm just going to look up the Ferengi in the book here. And I think Ferengi's are pretty powerful in, when it, in regards to these types of activities. Just so you know, you would know that going up in a game of chance against a Ferengi in his own turf, playing his own Ferengi game, even with the knowledge you have garnered, still put you at quite the disadvantage. So you know this going in, but you got to go this route. We got the tells, though. You do, but he's got the stance. So we'll we'll see. Uh, okay. That's why the Vulcan, like, we got the Vulcan. Isn't that an advantage? That's what I was hoping. That's why I put <laughs> I mean, her in a chair. Isn't that it? So we can play it back to show that it's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No matter what, we still got the bastard. What did no, you, that's what, why, what, that's what why did the Vulcan's roll, in the chair. Did you roll the first time uh, for the game itself? I don't even have any dice here. Can you grab some? Uh, no, I just lost, I think. No, seriously, would that help, Troy? That the fact that we got a Vulcan playing here? Like, super brain? Well, I have a focus on vigilance, which I figure will play out somehow. Like, All right, so what do we think? What do we think the game is going to be? Control and command, I think. Control and command. All right, that's that's your that's how you get you get your numbers. Okay. Mine are at, mine's fourteen. Uh, okay, I'm gonna get some dice out. I am going to get some some threat. Uh, so you guys have a big. This is a big. We've been playing for a while. Everything's come to fruition. There's a ton of latinum in credits on the table. This is the the winner takes all. Millennium Falcon on the line. This is the this is the big game. Okay, we're just going to. Oh, Millennium I'm Falcon so on the line. First time or second time? <laughs> this is just this time. All for nothing. I'm going to uh, spend. You better spend your uh, determination thing. Forget the two successes. I think. You also get. We also have what? What five momentum in our kitty? Uh, yeah, he's going to spend three to get two additional d twenties. You have you have five in your kitty, yeah. I think uh, the Vulcan needs to spend his determination. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, he's got a complication. All right. Uh, he got three successes. You got him, Tapral. You got him. You got him on a rope. One complication. <laughs> what does that determination do? As a, you can put it if you want to put it on a. Uh, if you can spend it, you can put one of your extra dice on a one, so it's guaranteed two successes. That's the main use for it, but there's other uses as well, like uh, creating advantages and stuff like that. So if you if you wanted it to be a long going game, then you could probably create an advantage. But we're we're going all for one big roll here. So he set um, three successes uh, with one complication. So let's do that, spend that determination. Okay, so that's a guaranteed two success. Okay. Um, now if you, if you want to buy more dice now, that counts as your first die. So if you want to buy one more die, it's going to cost you two. Do you understand? Okay, yep, yep. Because then okay. there's that's yeah. fine. Yeah, that sounds good. So because our our bucket has some extra dice, so you should spend those extra dice. So you're gonna spend two to get an extra die again. Spend yeah. more. Well, yeah. the thing is, that the, 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 don't a few of them go away at the end of the scene anyway, right? It will. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So so I awesome. Spend as much as you can. So if you spend the last three, you will be sitting on three extra dice. So you'll be at five d twenty, but you will be with nothing in your momentum pool. 5d20. Okay do I'm it. okay with that if you want to do that. That's anything do anything that you get here above him, go back in the pool, right? So Yeah. Also, what, what's the focus do again? Uh, so if you focus anything that you roll. So if you have a focus that's applicable, like you have yep. game games of chance focus, uh, you look at your discipline, which was command in this situation. And yep. so instead of just only ones getting doubles, now anything under that command score will get you doubles okay because i'm i'm just curious kind of vigilance and vigilance as defined is uh an action or state of keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulty 
Yeah, it's probably more for like a perception thing, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give it to you for sure. You're definitely eagle-eyed watching this game. You already know all the tales, so you've been paying uh, a lot of attention. So, what's your what's your command score? Uh, well, it's only two, so yeah. So you you've doubled your chances of getting doubles. I think the prowl's <laughs> sweating. I think she's sweating. Yep, I think so. So, so I'll, you're I'll, five five d twenty. Yeah. I only have three d twenty, so. <laughs> That was funny. She's actually nervous. But oh my first goodness. time I've seen her, her, her frown. My first roll, I only have three D20s. I got a nine, a three, and a one. Yeah. And I still got to roll two more 20s, or two more D20s. So that's four successes. Uh, uh, We're going to see it pissed off for Angie. Oh, my God. Five successes. All right, so you win yeah. the game. Yeah, exactly. And you, you regenerate two momentum or... You can spend one of these momentum to uh, get an advantage and or get more information or rub it in or do something. You can get the upper end by spending these momentum right now if you want. Instead I, of putting I'm them going in the to rub it in very nonchalantly. I'll just go, oh, did no, don't I you want to get an advantage? Hmm. Don't you want to get an advantage so we can get the info we want? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I won't spend it to rub oh, it in. Let him play. I see where he's going here. Yeah, let him go. Let him go. Oh, did 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 I I just win? Hmm. These Ferenga games are much more simpler than you make it out to be. <laughs> well, I guess I'll be taking our uh, earnings. Hey, hey, hey! Like, uh, take uh, not so fast, Vulcan. You <laughs> just can't take my money and leave. That's not how the game works. Um, I believe it is. Uh, by your rules, which are very simple, if I might add, for a game. What do you know of rules? Can you quote me the rules of acquisition when it comes to gaming, Vulcan? No, I think not. The game is not over until everyone at the table agrees it's over. Or I, I everyone is without their winnings. I still have money. I still have latinum. I still have the credits that your Bajoran friend over there lost to me earlier. I say we play again, double or nothing. What do you say, Vulcan? Is your green blood up to the challenge? <laughs> well, we could be, but I believe that you should speak to my commander in chief. And I step up and I walk away and don't even turn back around, despite any protests. Not so fast, Vulcan. Vulcan, this is my table. <laughs> you leave when I tell you to leave, Vulcan. Vulcan. <laughs> he slams, okay, so. his, slams his little stubby hands onto the table. Wow, this is not playing out the way I planned. You, come here. And he brings the guild beautiful woman over. Here, have a seat. I must distract me here. Uh, please. <laughs> she starts massaging his lobes, like rubbing his big ears. He's like, yeah, yeah that's so smart. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Uh uh, Tapro comes back to me. Yeah, Earl. Okay, so uh, uh, we'll just you know pretend to discuss it a little bit, and then uh, I will approach the table uh, with Moloch, and then I'll say, uh, Moloch, uh, my my friend is uh, tired of these games. Uh, it doesn't uh, stimulate her mind uh, as much as she thought it would. Uh, so uh, so she's gonna take her winnings Please. and leave the table. And then uh, does he protest? Uh, no, he's he's totally like engulfed oh, in his right. low rubs at this point. Oh, oh, oh what were you saying, but John? <laughs> I I wave off the girl, you know, like, like shoo her away, so he can so he can concentrate. She looks said, down uh, at him. And he looks back up at her. He's like, <laughs> keep going, keep going. Oh, go ahead, please, go ahead and talk. <laughs> Time is money. Yes, rules of acquisition sixty two. Time is money. So, so my my friend is leaving, and she is going to take her winnings. Uh, but uh, uh, there is an issue. There is a something that might get some of your winnings back to you if you're willing to uh, part with some information. Well, the join. Uh, rules of acquisition number seventy four states <laughs> knowledge equals profit. So, right. So, if I uh, were so, to get some of my profits back, then maybe I might have some information. Right. So, what I, what I'll do is I put my hand down 
and you know like you know half the money i'll just like separate it out in, in half and i just like shove it toward his direction and i'll say and uh i'll say i just need to know uh, what you have uh information on this on this uh, i won't even say anything i go is i go that's enough for the question i need to ask you oh yeah well depends i mean information depends well, I, on what I, you're I, looking for i get my other very powers and i get my value. other hand I, I get my other hand and I, and I push it back to the to my uh to her back to her winnings i go Unless you don't want to talk, then I understand if you don't. No, no, no. I'm, I'm willing to talk. Ask her a question, Bajoran. So uh, did I get that girl's name? I don't think I wrote it down. You know what the captain's name was? And the captain's name was Anthony Carsa. And you know it was his daughter that was uh, apprehended or went missing. Okay, right. So I'll say, uh, yes, I'm looking uh, for a friend of mine that uh, I haven't been able to track down, uh, uh, Mrs. Carsa. Oh, Carsa sounds like a human name. <laughs> I yes. remember human names. Yes, I heard that name mentioned across well, my table. Do you, have, do you have any idea where where she might be? Because, like I said, I've been trying to track her down for a friend. Well, yeah. Well, I don't really know where Miss Carsa is, but I can point you in the direction that someone that might. <laughs> And I and I look at the money and I start, I start uh, dividing the half that I was gonna give him into half, and I go, that's not very good information. So I'll just well, take some. Well, it's of the closest you got to getting a lead to finding the little lady that went missing, isn't it? He looks at his the earnings hungrily with his lips lips licking. Please now, don't be so hasty. Well, you I'll, give me those monies, and I will give you the names of the people that Shirley can give you the information you're looking for. Yeah. A middleman, I told you. I'm a middleman. I'm a importer exporter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the the import the, the the product you're selling just doesn't seem very uh very worthwhile. I don't know. Can you can you tell me more than that, you know, I'm a person. I'm a man. I'm a man of. Uh, of I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. All a right, person, so I a person that came across my table, much as you have now. Okay, what's the what's this name? Told me something about right. some girl going missing. All right, so I shoved the the credits toward his, you know, the latinum and the credits toward his pile, and I said, so, so give me the name and and uh, and consider it. Uh, uh, oh, very well. A deal. There's a beautiful lady, quite luscious. Her name is Lerda. Her big go Lerda. Lerda. She's a big Goonies boyfriend, or at least he fancies himself. His name is Gogan. They're Ori Orion free traders. They came through here. We might have done some business, but either way, these Orions told me that um, a while ago, some of their Mm, syndicate brothers had apprehended the ship that had become derelict in the region. On the ship were a bunch of humans that were here from Earth doing, I don't know what they said, it was something about helping Cardassians or something, but their ship became derelict and their Orion friends apprehended them and took them back to their planet i don't know anything more you'll have to get the rest of the information from learn time i can give you her destination she's in the outer rim of the station they oh. too are derelict not able to go through the wormhole with their no i said too much <laughs> you'll have to get the information from them be gone now leave the profits I'm tired of you. <laughs> <laughs> he leans uh, back up to the pretty girl and she starts rubbing his lobes again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll I'll quickly make the egg I'll collect the I'll collect the winnings, the half of the winnings that I give away. I mean not that I give away that I kept. And then I uh I you know I give them back to Taprell. I said, Good job, Taprell. Uh, you uh you've uh, earned uh you've done good work. As uh, the rest of you too, I'll say. And I'll tell them the information about the about the beautiful Lerda and the Goonish boyfriend Gogan and and uh, with the location of the their derelict ship. 
their ship is um their ship is here as well in one of the smaller um staging zones of the space station oh, uh, here. but golgan and uh lerda are Moloch had expanded on this he told you that they are not allowed to come into the uh station proper they had to stay out in the circular outer rims because lerda had got found herself in trouble in the past and it caused uh to you know those guys that are twins that are always together they like need to be together these big big alien species she caused two of those guys to get into a fight uh near one nearly killing the other one and like breaking his back or something uh, that happened last week uh, and as a result, um, the security had forbid Lerda and Gogan from coming into uh, the promenade into the, uh, the places of uh, recreation. So that's Deep Space Nine security has a yeah. So these guys are they're they're out in the outer rim. Uh, they have some quarters out there waiting for something, waiting okay. to take some take some uh, stuff through the wormhole. So what do you know of the uh, Orion Free Traders? Are they're they're not really technically a part of the syndicate, which is the large mob-like uh, criminal uh, structure. They're kind of broken away from that and are freelancers, not particularly evil or anti-federation. Whereas the Orion Syndicate, the Orion Syndicate would definitely be considered uh, enemies of the Federation. Okay. Moloch gives you the to, gives you the location on there. Cool. So, uh, uh, Lieutenant Sinto, uh, can you talk? Uh, go make a brief. Uh, 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 locate the the security uh, person the person in charge, and kind of ask him uh, how how permanent that that the banning of uh, Lorta and her goonish friend is from the from the promenade and stuff. Because maybe we can. Uh, we can, uh, you know, like barter having her access back to the regular uh, Space Nine uh, for for more information. You can always go to them. But yes. I was just going to say, weren't we just about to take the ship out for a little spin? And I look at the XO. Uh, yeah, how far? How far? How far is that out? Let's not bring official federal that kind of crouch. Oh no, no, you, you, you misunderstood. Not like the outer rim, like a different space zone. The outer rim of the space station. There's like an out the outer ring. Yeah, the outer ring, exactly. They're still on the space station. They're, they're in a sleeping quarters on the outer ring of the space station, which you could just walk to now if you chose to do so. Oh. I'm just I'm just thinking that we, we might want a, something to barter with. The, for the, I understand. You, you want to use it as a bargaining chip. Yeah. Yes, correct. And yeah, for sure. The I mean the security here are very Federation friendly. You would have no problem getting a uh, a conversation with someone on the mid level uh, control of the space station at the very least. Right, right. And I figure yeah. that since uh, since uh, Sintos is our security officer, he might have a a better way of relating to the security personnel on this uh, space. Station. Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Um, that's. I'm just going to nonchalantly try to contact the local uh, security station and punch in the uh, information for these two individuals in sea boat contacting the local liaison officer. Yeah. So all throughout the station, there's these little offices and detaining uh, areas, but there's a major, there's a main hub as well, which is like the, not the prison, but the jailhouse type of place that you could attend to as well. Go to in person if you want. Or you can just use the comm systems and communicate through and talk to someone. I'm like comms. I'm like, yeah, this is Lieutenant Sinso of the uh, Nova Starship. Or no, we're not a starship, are we? Resolution? Yeah, the resolution. <coughs> and uh, requesting a uh, possible security clearance for two individuals. That will be doing um, correspondence and refit for the ship. Kind of say vaguely. Um, depends on the name of the individuals. If they've been ordered to uh, limited access, then there's probably a reason for that. Corporal. Please, individuals, now look up their sta status. 
Okay, I give the individual's names. Uh, I say, yeah, uh, this is a security chief security officer for the resolution. Uh, the names of the individual, sir. What was his name again? Latara. Lurta. Lurka. And, and Golgan. <clears throat> you know them to be Orion Free Traders. Yes, merchant. He passed, free that he passed that information on. He says, "Oh well." It seems that they've been given uh, limited access to the other rim, sir. Um, it is not within my capacity to change that status at this time. I apologize. Uh, would there be said uh, captain on board? I have a commander. Yes, sir. I can reach out to him if you'd like. And I mute my comms for a minute. What was the captain's name, his daughter? You know, her name is Carsa, is her last name. You never yeah, did right. get her first name. So it would be Captain Carsa. Hmm. I wonder if he could get a security clearance. All right, All right call back. All right, stand by. I'll get security clearance for you. Bloop. Okay, what's your next move? I kind of run into a wall there, guys. But this Captain Carsa, he may have some pull on the station. Let's go visit these two chaps. Let's. Uh, we look. I look up their address on my little database. Yep, you know that you have the travel through the opposite side of the promenade and then through the uh, outer rim, out to the outer rim where there's five lots of uh, cargo and some living accommodations. By the way, in the last, I was going to mention long ago that I had been scanning the uh, ship uh, complement of the actual resolution and I would have helped, can help but notice if there would have been any Kardashian crew members. On the resolution? Yeah. I'm going to say that there isn't. There's not many Kardashians that are in the Federation, even at this time. Okay. There's only even been only a few Bajorans that have uh, went through the Academy. So there's probably likely very few Kardashians. If there would be, they would be enlisted uh, just civilians more so than they would be officers like yourself. But even Spot. still, no. Right. There's Kardashians here, though. There are definitely Kardashians on this space station. Mm. I thought I smelt them. So, I crouch with them. I say, so I think we have to come talk to these two. There's a girl's life on the line, I hear. And that's cause enough for me. Uh, uh, Who is Cynthia talking to? Is... Us? Yeah, uh, everybody. Uh, yeah. So what did you learn? I'm afraid that I ran into limits of my authority. I I may have some authority on the resolution, but on this station, I ran up into red tape. I'm thinking that this Captain Corso, he might be able to pull some strings, but hmm, okay. we're on our own, I think. All right. All right. Well, let's take uh, let's get a uh, take a visit uh, to Lorta and her Gogan friend. All right, uh, this is all. A few minutes later, 20 minutes, you've made the trek across the station to the outer ring, uh, to this, uh, where everything in the inner ring were, was a little bit more brighter and a little more maintained. Some of the stuff is a little more run down. You can go through a few cargo areas. Uh, and on the far side of this big cargo hall, you see this small little holding area. And uh, sitting upon a large crate is this beautiful green-skinned female. And she's kind of like sitting there seductively and standing cross-armed out in front of her uh, is this six-foot-eight large musculature uh, green-skinned uh, individual. And we'll... Take a little break. We're going to take a five-minute break, and when you come back, you can uh, interact with the lovely Lurta and the menacing Gogan. 
So we'll take a little break and then we'll, right. we'll come back and pick it back up. Okay. Awesome. Good job, Troy, by the way. Good job. All right, so that scene is over. Uh, you guys have one memento, which dissipates to nothing. You guys used up all your momentum to get the information from this KG Ferengi. But you got a location, you got a name to put you but on I your. A, I have a question before we head out there. Mm -hmm. Are we? Can we run ship, ship sensors on the rim of the space station at all? Or what do you mean? You want to use your go onto the ship and run your scan from the ship? Yeah. Can we scan this other guy's ship? Scan, <laughs> scan Lurda's ship. Lurda's ship. Yeah. Uh, you can go back to your ship and do that, or you can contact the captain and have someone on the ship to do that. Certainly. 
I was just thinking before you might you might draw the attention of that ship and or the space station itself you must remember oh. that the space station is no longer in control of by the federation oh okay it is yeah, now okay. back in the control of the bajorans who are a neutral party yeah then i wouldn't do that because that would be a bit of a I, okay I don't know. just wondering just understanding the politics of the region and the limitation of the control you could do it but you would be potentially Drawing attention to yourselves, like what? No, no. Then, then I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. It'd probably be considered a faux pas, right? Uh, I would say so. Yeah. It's just that I just I I've only seen a couple episodes of these Space Nine, so I have no. Come on, Morgan. Is, you would have had a lot. You would have had a lot more potential rights to do so during that time because the place was. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I guess this is after the war and the fall oh. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's back in the hands of Be Bajor for sure. It was not yet joined the federation even though they're starting to lean that way they're still very much an independent okay then let's just go visit these guys and quote unquote talk to them how are we armed uh, yeah, i don't think we are all right i would say that you could potentially have your side phasers with you you guys have not had any criminal reasons why those things would have to be uh, turned in I would say, but when you're in like the promenade and stuff like that, you wouldn't have weapons with you. Uh, but going out to this outer rim of the thing, you could potentially have weapons. These guys would not have be allowed to have any weapons on them because of their criminal history and potential. Uh, That's allowed though, right? <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, you see this voluptuous, green-skinned, uh, black-haired woman sitting, kind of leaning suggestively on this large uh, Durasteel crate, and uh, just off to her side, you see this nearly seven-foot-tall giant man. Uh, they're kind of having a conversation. It seems to be mostly one-sided, uh, the lovely Lurda being the one that seems to be doing all the talking. You're still standing uh, across the um, storage slash cargo area looking upon these people. So you have time to make some preemptive plans if you want before you go in and engage. That's a pretty busy area. Uh, there seems to be other people coming and going, moving freight in materials around. Uh, they don't seem to notice you just yet, but you are um, four uh, Starfleet officers standing out, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So you kind of stand out a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the attention of Tapral when I say uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna feel a little bit uh, flustered and probably a little blushed. Have a little blue, uh, red in my cheeks, and I say uh, you might have to deal with the talking because uh, that is one fine looking woman. Hmm. Uh, yes, the uh, physiology seems to be all adequate and symmetrical, so I would assume, based on statistical analyses, that one would find this uh, female to be attractive. Uh, no, no, that's damn fine, <laughs> but that's okay, yes. So, uh, I, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll let you take the lead to Pearl, because uh, uh, I'm seeing, I'm I'm a little uh, out of sorts uh, just looking at her. Who imagine uh, talking to her? So you have to take the lead. Hey, it's just. I a... can do that, Commander. I'll go with you, Tapril. Of course you will, you hardy bastard. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, I'll go with you definitely. So you guys walk up while the others remain back a few feet. Yeah, I, I'll follow. I'll follow behind, but I, I, I'll like you know. I'll just be like, like you said, a couple, a couple feet behind them. Right, you're gonna let her have the initial, um, initial conversation. Yeah, I, I'll be checking out uh, Gogan there to see uh, appraise his, uh, his, uh, his lethality. I have a, I have a, tr I have a trait or talent called constantly watching. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can can I look up Orion uh, physiology on my, like, I, I guess we have a. On the tricorder or something? Can we look it up? Oh, most like, definitely. You you have like a data slate that you can look up information for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna look up Orion uh, physiology and and you know like 
Sure, you could, you could do that in a second. I mean, Orions have been known by the Starfleet since the early days of space flight. It's one of the first uh, species that Starfleet had interacted with. Uh, those initial interactions were not particularly friendly. Uh, you know that they, they are very much slavers. And if they've had any allies in their spacefaring endeavors, it's been with the Klingons in the past. Uh, Physiology-wise, you know that men are like unnaturally strong. Uh, rivaling that of like Klingons, uh, far surpassing that of humans. Uh, being that this gentleman's almost seven feet tall, you know that he could snap any one of you off over his knee uh, like a twig. Uh, but even more dangerous is the Orion females. It is early in the days of the interactions. It was always seemed as if the women were uh, objects and nothing more, but it's come since come to your understanding with ongoing interactions and diplomacy, that it is actually the women of the species that control the entire society. And they do it with sexual pheromones, mostly, that they uh, emit and put out there and that drive men mad. And it would appear that your Bajoran friend has already picked up the scent as he sits salivating behind you as you walk up towards these two uh, and so you're sitting there, Denoble, and you're you're taking this in, and you you know this about these Orions, and you look over at your commanding officer, and he seems to be like just staring uh, lustfully at this uh, this woman. Oh come on, I I, I have a I have a handkerchief. I'm not so levitating. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I turn to uh, to Prowl. I go, hey, uh, do you have any sort of shot for? Uh <laughs> boss, I think he's getting affected by some pheromones. <laughs> so salt Peter. Something, something that we can definitely check back once we get to uh the med bay, but um, oh no, you don't have anything in your med kit right now, you can just give him a shot. Hey, hey, I don't want some goddamn experimental drug on me because he's <laughs> crazy denoblian. I, I think the commander will um make it through this interaction here. Uh, on your readings there, was there anything interesting about... Um, yeah, is there any sort of weaknesses or anything? Uh, not that you can tell. In in almost all ways, they would be similar to humans outside of the pheromones and the, the men can grow uh, to large sizes. But no, they don't have any kryptonite or anything like that. Okay, so I, I bring that up. That they're, uh... they're very much human. They're very human-like. Let's mm -hmm. kick them in the balls. Okay. They do have the same anatomy. Same and sexual. brought to my attention from Natal that the it's like a matriarchal type society and that the females are the ones that are known to be in charge generally. How's this affecting Dak? He's uh might have met her gaze, Lerta, and he's sauntering over. Yeah, she catches your eye as well. You're scrapping large man uh but more so uh gogan sees your leering eyes as you approach and he steps forward and makes a guttural grunt <laughs> what business do you have here speak up vulcan you too human <laughs> easy friend easy we are no uh, friend to the federation uh federation i know right but I, we just come here to talk Lerda puts talk. Out her, takes in her hand uh puts it on gogan's shoulder she eases herself down slowly arching her lower back with her bosom uh almost busting out of her chain uh, bikini top uh she saunters down easy gogan they come in peace. They're Federation officers. Look at them. Civilized folk. Not savage like you. Please, go. Go work on the ship. I'll interact with these individuals. I can be civilized. And she bats her eyes at you. Uh, Dak, please come forth. Bring your Vul Vulcan bitch too, if you must. Um, <laughs> come, friend. <laughs> This is actually my friend, Tanaka. Oh, yeah. 
that wrong. Shapril. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah that well. It matters not what her name is. I care not what her name is. Uh, you come here, you have business, you have something to tell me, something to ask of me. Yes, this is, uh, I'm sad to say you're uh, stranded here somewhat, but we come here on sort of a uh, hero's journey. That you do might... look like a hero. Can you I... save me from my dangers? I must leave this place. I've been here way too long. I fear my welcome is overstayed. What but alas, needed? I am in trouble. I, my ship is broken. And she puts her arms up like this and leans back. I'm in need of a mechanic. Gogan's a good man. He has many talents. Mechanic, it is not one of them. Nor me. I could never get my hands dirty. Well, actually, then we might have something to talk about, my dear. Um, my friend and I are here on the business of another friend and we're looking for a person hence the hero bit mm. we're looking for a, an actual girl ah yes i know many girls this one's special she went missing her uh, big smiling face uh the demeanor changes to something more stoic a girl you say a missing girl where have you been? Who have you been talking to? Has it been Moloch, that little Ferengi? He's never been able to keep his mouth quiet. I should pick my business partners, partners more carefully. Yes, I know of a girl. What have you know? What do you need to know of her? Ask well. your question. Yes, we are heroes, trying to be. We're it's trying to find her. Heroes, aren't they? But for this information in return, perhaps we could look at your ship. Well, yes, of course. That would be expected. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Please. She saunters forth towards you. She reaches out her hand uh, seductively to you resist in any way i do in a, i do in a coy way and that i try to play the game and re return a somewhat in a suave manner i go that depends i not i don't fall for any girl she strokes your face your heart palpitates <laughs> beating out of your chest. So what about your big friend? Worry not about him. He has his uses. But you, you are a fine specimen. And again, she strokes your face. <laughs> you just feel beads of sweat starting to form at your brow. You're the girl. overcome with a satiation lust for this woman. I yes. told you to let the girl talk. <laughs> you are right there too. You're right there, Volk, and then you would like to intervene. You see, you see, I'll, she's I'll just like my, I'll use my determination. She's just stroking your face. He's losing gonna, to grab her wrist. I'll try to grab her wrist. <coughs> okay, so we'll do, grip we'll do an opposed chest, uh, an opposed test rather. I'm gonna Let try me, get self control. Yeah, so there's gonna be some form of discipline check here. Let me just get the character sheet so I can see. Um, she's going to be using presence, okay. and you're going to be using uh, either control or presence to counter it. I think both nine. Okay, so she's going to use presence, and she's going to use uh, command. Mm. Could I? Uh, I was gonna. I was gonna use security. But yeah, you're 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 going to physic, in, like, you, you're going to physic. You could totally use security. The training kick in. I'd be like disciplined. I'm still in uniform and might be a 23 year old young. <laughs> so she's going to cash in one to get an extra d20. 
So she's going to roll three, and she did not roll well. She did not get any successes. Can I so use one of, my, one of my values or my? Uh, what is it? Trust is for only those I know. Loyalty is for friends. That that you can use that for sure. So if you succeed, you'll earn a determination. So you can spend a determination to automatically succeed here because you're going to give you two, and then you'll just earn it back because you use your value. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go hard no here. I'm gonna use my determination. <coughs> All of a sudden, I get some of that stoic Riker backbone <laughs> as I grab her wrist the in an iron nose. grip, and I go, ah, 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 ah. I say, okay, perhaps well, there'll be another time for this, but really? I need to know about another girl, not you. Okay, roll your, roll your die now. So you're going to roll two. 20-sided, right? Now, I used my determination. Yeah, so you're already succeeded. This is going to be yeah. to add more momentum. You've already got two. You just earned two momentum. Uh, a ten. More a complication if it wasn't twenty. A ten and a four. Good job. So those so. are both successes as well. So you got you garnered four momentum, or you can spend some of that momentum now as an immediate buy and get more information or change the scene in some way that advantage gives you guys an advantage. Pummeler with the information. No, I'm going to <coughs> change the scene. Okay. That's um, all of a sudden, and yeah, I, I'm going to split this because I'm, I'm going to grab her wrist almost to the point of pain so that she's shocks. It shocks her. Yeah. And I know this. I grab her and I lift her up. I'm really strong and big. I know Buddy's strong, but I'm fucking strong too. So I lift her up, squish her wrist, and I say, yeah. no, no, you're not the girl. I'm interested at this point, my dear. And I gently put her hand down. And I change the scene by becoming quite suave again. But we don't need this. I'm just looking for information now. There'll be other times for us to perhaps meet again. Yeah, the she's, girl. She's taken back. She's taken back by the fact that her feminine um, persuasion has had little effect on you. Uh, there's very few uh, humans, especially, that she's not been able to bend to her will. Uh, so she takes a half step back. Yes, of course. As I said, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. The girl you're looking for, Phyllis. Phyllis Carso. Well, at least that's what she told the other Orions, the ones that picked her up and took her to Rigzori 5. They found her ship, derelict, her and her other science students. Or at least that's what they said they were. They said they were psychologists studying the after effects of war their ship was found in newly occupied romulan space by she kind of turns and looks like she wants to spit on the ground she was found by excuse me i said to get the name here she was found by daris and her goons taken to Rixori 5. No doubt if the girl was pretty at all, she would be sold into slavery by now. That was six days ago. And six. Rexori 5 is only three days journey from here. I look at I look at uh, uh, Tuprel. I go, so how far is that away? And I look back at her. As I said, I'm grateful for this and we will look at your ship perhaps i have the part i just need someone to install them and you really realize I, that you I will do, owe us a favor for doing i do this. i do want to help you and let it be known that daris is no friend of mine truth is she is a heart's rival of mine, someone that I would love to see the Federation uh, take out, if you know what I mean. Well, Unfortunately, it's just me and Gogon and our little ship, but we'd be more than happy to come with you and to show you and to share with you anything we know about Rixori 5. We've been there before. It's been some time since we were banished from the location. But I will tell you everything I know. I like you, human. And she looks over to the Vulcan. 
Your little bitch isn't so bad either. So she offers her a slice. Her name is Typrell. <laughs> I say you will call her that name. Very well. Don't press me too much. I might have to get Gogan to come back here. He doesn't like people talking to me in such a harsh tone. I think you like it. Maybe I do. She offers you a sly smile. Come, I'll show you my ship. Oh, to Pearl, I look at her, kind of shrug. And meanwhile, the sweat's kind of pouring down. And I'm like, ah. L L Lieutenant, you should not let your emotions take over your reason. It's not becoming of you. And I follow her in without like any remorse or offense that she'd call me bitch or anything. I'm just shaking my head again. Oh my God. Whew. And I look at the others and I kind of say, did you get that? And I had my turn my calm off. <clears throat> so the thing is, do we want to fix their ship or fix it after we come back? Mm. In case they gave us some wrong information. I tried my best. Um, I, I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, Lieutenant uh, Tinto did a good job here. Uh, I don't see any... Uh, uh, there's a possibility that she could be lying, but uh, considering the information is a very... What is it? Uh, very timely. I think we should uh, try to get to this uh, Rock Story 5 as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Maybe I'll take a look at installing their thing. I can help install their... Yes. Oh, oh, oh I, I didn't know you were an engineer. So, I think, I think they may, they may remember this, and they could be proved to be valuable in the future. They have contacts, but I don't trust them. They I offered just, to come. They offered to come with you and to Viper, offer any idiot assistance. Viper, idiot Viper alert. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. What do you guys? Yeah, think? I know. I think. I. I wonder if we want them to help. That's. <clears throat> But I can uh, help. The, I have four engineering, so I can. Kapro, you you walk through the uh, back <laughs> past the cargo area. Uh, Golgan is just standing there. He's just moving around things for the sake of looking busy. Uh, you look through the uh, window, and you can see just beyond through the airlock that's here. You can see this small uh, vessel. It is a. Uh, class for lightning class which is a like a maybe a four passenger uh, Orion uh, what they call a um, it's like a cargo runner it's a built for speed ship and it, it can only carry a small amount of cargo so if she's running cargo to the uh, through the wormhole you know that she's moving small, valuable things, not like lugging large amounts of freight. Uh, you know the ship is faster than what your Nova class ship is. Uh, it probably can get upwards of warp eight, or sorry, warp nine. So it's extremely fast. Uh, it's not very durable. It doesn't have a lot of payout when it comes to uh, combat capacity. Uh, it's just built for speed built for running more so than fighting. She tells you, uh, I have the MK4 navigation computer uh, mod chip ready to be installed. Uh, I tried to do it myself, but I fear I caused more harm to the uh, central computer system than I did uh, good. I wouldn't let Gogan near this thing. Uh, so uh, and I did try to Acquired to get someone here on the station, but unfortunately, I've been exiled out here to the outer rim, and uh, I've been unable to find a uh, trustworthy engineer or mechanic to install this uh, piece of handiwork that I need to get on my way. If you could do this for me, as I said, I will give you all the information I know about uh, Rexori 5 and the establishment that Darius has set up there, she and her small uh, cell of the syndicate. 20 well, minutes of 20 minutes of work. 
and I will give you an opportunity to save the young girl. To be the her. hero. Yeah. I think I'm better than the Vulcan, probably. So It's not a hard install. These guys are just not... Uh, yeah. familiar with this technology so, at all so it's going to be it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a difficulty zero check so it's going to actually be a good chance for you guys to build up some momentum yeah. for for what's to come yeah so i have reason of 11 and engineering four so that's like a 15. So. okay so you're gonna you're gonna do the assist or you gonna yeah. do the main role i think i'll do the main role okay does someone want to assist her yeah um I'm not very good with science or. No, well, let one of the others do it then, unless you want to yeah, pull your way in. Exactly, it's I would. I have engineering. Oh, you do. Three. That's not bad. You do have more above average aptitude for it. Ah, uh, yeah, you go ahead, Mrs. Science. Okay. I got a uh, one success. Okay, so that's momentum. Uh, so I want to roll the assist. Again, it's going to be um, right. reason and computers. I got an eight. For so reason and science. Maybe the, the Vulcan doesn't have... Yeah, the I, Vulcan should have reason. I just made it out of nine. I rolled an eight. Oh, then you already That's rolled one. it. That's good. So yeah, he gives you a little bit of assistance with his engineering. Uh, well, I got to shipboard tactical systems, but that's more of a security thing. Yeah, that is more of a security thing. This is just navigation computers. Uh, but as such, you did earn uh, two momentum, which brings you back up to a total of five. Uh, yeah, within, I'd say, you know, 10 minutes, you guys have this thing installed, uh, booted up, and everything comes online. Uh, and she looks at you, uh, and she gives you a... Attempts to give you this is the Denoblin that did the work, right? Yeah, who was also uh, a pheromone uh, exuding uh, race, and she senses this from you, and she kind of steps back. Um, not that you're intentionally um, releasing the pheromones, but she has this innate ability to pick up on it, and, and she goes in to like hug you and to to use her. Uh, alluring skill set on you and then she she stops abruptly and just offers you a thank you yeah so I when do we leave I go, sisters got to do it for themselves <laughs> she looks back to uh lenaris uh, uh so when do we leave or to whoever was doing the primary negotiations earlier well the one i was talking was uh was Sinta. Oh, yeah, that's right. So when do we leave, she says to uh, Dak. As soon as you're ready. I think time is an issue, my dear. Um, can you come soon? And perhaps I have an idea. Um, no, I'll have to wait. Yes. How many... Uh, you said you were going to tell us a little bit about this uh, Daris and her band of goons, you called them. Yeah, they are slavers, and uh, they have taken up residence on Resori Five, which used to Rob. be a used to be a Tellarite mine, uh, but now they're using it as a staging area to uh, bring individuals that they have obtained uh, and they sell to the highest bidder in a slave market. Not unknown or unusual business for individuals of the Orion Syndicate. So this planet is not like a large inhabited planet. It's more like a little the freaking rock and outpost. Space. It used to be owned by the Tellarites, as I said, but it was abandoned generations ago. The uh, yeah. Syndicate uh, created a small cell there of which Darius took over just recently. Uh, it has splintered of which I have left and several of my uh, sisters and brothers, uh, Darius is left with a smaller contingent of individuals with just a few ships. Um, they pick up SOS calls and uh, 
calls for help throughout the debris area of the zone. And instead of going and applying and helping, they capture any that may be living, anyone of value, and either sit and sell them back as blackmail or sell them on the open market in the slave pens. Uh, it, came to, it, came, it came to my knowledge that they had come across a ship from Earth, a science vessel, and one of the individuals or someone of note, a captain of the Federation's daughter, it was said to me. Uh, Darius knows this as well. So, as I said, this girl has either been sold, someone that will use her to get an upper hand against her father, or maybe sold for a sex slave if she is someone that is of good build. Now, well, our, our big decision is either the uh, are we allow? You think we're uh, the captain will allow us to take the resolution? That's why I was just going to mention. But we may yeah. have to ask a favor. But the captain sent you on this mission, right? Did yes, we, we Cap the right? captain is the individual that sent you to do no. this because it's his friend that is right. the is the. What asking the quest skipper? Yeah. No. Wait a minute. There were two captains. <coughs> yes, Correct. Of the other One of them's daughter is not the captain of the resolution. No, no. but the captain of the resolution was given this task. Yes. Yes. So it, it played it like this, just in case it was convoluted earlier. Captain Corso was the captain to Captain Mutre during gotcha. the Dominion War. So your captain, Captain Mutre, as a um, he wants to help out his whole uh, superior officer. The superior officer is no longer an active ship captain, but is working as a educator back on Earth. His daughter is a student, a medical student, not within Starfleet, but they were acting, doing their uh, final studies out here in the Alpha Quadrant. She and some of her psychologists and uh, counseling uh, companions and fellow students were out doing post-war trauma studies on the Kardashian uh, own world, or what's left of it. They didn't quite make it. And as such, they've been picked up uh, and apprehended by this band of Orion bandits, brigands. I, I think we have to take our starship because this other ship these guys have only carries four people. So even if we went, we can't bring the girl back, and there's probably other students who want to rescue at the same time. Only holds four people. Yeah, their their little vessel does. Yeah, so we'll have to take our eighty person ship and rescue all the students that were captured. Yep, because they're all Federation citizens, right? That's correct. Could we bring the ship along as like a outrigging scout vessel? Well, they <coughs> come with us if we asked. They volunteered to come with cause, because they have um, some revenge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Lerda would love to see um, Darius go down. Now, do you guys want to continue? We're at 12 o'clock, which is where we were scheduled to to stop. you want to keep playing, or do you want to try and pick this up at some later date? This is the nemesis of me trying to run a one-shot. never have enough time to finish. <laughs> yeah, I'm, guys. I'm, I'm yes, yes. Both yeah, options. Either way. Yeah, it's still kind of early for me. It's only like eight o'clock. What are you saying, John? You got something going on? I know I got to get to bed myself soon. It's been a long day for me. Uh, well, it depends on how much time, how much more we got to go, right? I mean, there's a, well, there's a lot more to this, right? I would think so. It depends on how you guys want to want to uh, approach it. But as things have went so far, yeah, it's probably going to be as, <laughs> as, as much time as much time as we've spent so far. I would say. Well, yeah, it's up to you, Troy, sounds like. Um, it's been an excellent experience, though. I love the game, and your, your uh, GMing has been brilliant. And everyone's playing awesome. Yeah, we got a good group so far. Yeah.
Yeah. Uh, the only thing is scheduling, right? I don't know what your guys' schedule is like. My, if I was to run it again, it would be two weeks from now, same time, same place. Sounds good to me. Hmm. Yeah. You want to try to do that? How about you, Morgan? You think? You yeah, need... two weeks. I'm I'm open. Okay, let's try that then, because uh, again, it's it's midnight here. I've been up. Since oh yeah, I don't want to say what's that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll end it there, guys. If we're going to end it, uh, it's a good place to end it. So you have the information. You have the coordinates and location for Rixori 5. Uh, you know the nemesis of the individual you're trying to track down. As you were saying, the captain is on board because it, it is his, um, you know, oath and bond to his previous captain that's going to send you on this mission. Now, whether he wants to send all of you and his new uh, acquired crew on this mission that is not really uh, regulation Starfleet. You guys are all doing this before you're actually even officially uh, undertaking your mission. So <laughs> these are things that can be discussed and you might make decisions based on that. We might only take a small group of people. Uh, one of the things about the resolution ship, it has this little, um, it's called a wave rider or something like that. Same as what the Intrepid class ship had. It's just like really, really um, fanciful, uh, high technology uh, runabout, basically. So you got your own like interplanetary uh, shuttlecraft that you could use to go down to the planet. So if you want to just take a small away mission. And like the Intrepid as well, the res resolution is also able to land on the planet surfaces, which is not the norm for starship so you'll have some options of uh, how you want to approach it but there's also some challenges is what we'll get into uh next time there's some surprises about rexori 5 that might pose some challenges uh but we'll get into that again and i'd like to thank you all for playing uh so we got darren morgan saul and john and again i'm troy and uh, it was a pleasure and we'll see you in two weeks hopefully we'll, we'll pick it up and finish the, the one shot it never happens in one <laughs> shot, shot. <laughs> yeah exactly well, good game guys so all of all you right. all right thanks guys i'm going to be around for a little bit but i'm going to stop the broadcast